If you edit videos, then you probably already know that music is one of the most impactful pieces of your entire edit, but it can also be really challenging to work with sometimes. So today I'm gonna share with you five tips to up your editing game when it comes to working with music. And make sure to stay till the end because the last one is super helpful and I'm pretty sure you haven't heard about it before. What to do if it's kind of hard to hear your voice over your music. How do you play your music and have your voice over and not have the two competing with each other? A simple volume drop might sound like the right solution, but there's actually a way better and much more helpful tip backed by science. It's actually just the way that audio works. Everything that makes noise does so at a specific frequency, including your voice. The most prominent part of my voice, for example, sits here between 120 to 2000 Hertz. And there's actually a way that you can carve out a section of that frequency in your music so that your music is playing in these sections, but your voice is playing in this section. And here's how to do that in Premiere Pro. Go to the effects panel and grab a simple parametric equalizer, set the Q to four, the boost to negative 18, and then the center you wanna to set to where your vocal range is located. If your voice is sort of mid-range lower male voice like mine, you probably want it at around 12 to 1400. If your voice is higher or lower than mine, then you wanna raise or lower this number accordingly, but don't really go above 1800 or below 1200 because nobody's voices are really beyond those two extremes. But now that your music has a channel carved out for your voice to sit in, it sounds like this. Here's the before. It sounds a lot better, doesn't it? But you can hear that if we were to just drop the volume, we lose all of that other information, like that crunchy bass in the song. But when we use this method, we retain all that other information, like the bass and the other instruments happening, because they're not competing at the same frequency. And here's the best part. When you save this as a preset, then you don't have to do this for the entire song. You can just cut specific portions of the music where you want it to be quieter, under your voice and add it to just that section. Then when there's gonna be some B-roll, we can make sure that this effect isn't applied and then just add an audio crossfade and there we go. And I just showed you the next tip, but you might've missed it. Basically, we just perfectly cut so that the downbeat of the song was on this cut to the B-roll here. It sounds really easy until you actually try to do it. How do you really quickly and easily line up your music with a downbeat or a really impactful moment of the song? Do you have to place down your audio and then painfully edit everything before that moment so that it lines up perfectly? No! One of the best tricks you can keep in mind as a video editor that you'll use over and over again in almost any situation is to start at the end and then work backwards. Find the place in your music where you want the hit to happen and then make a cut there so that that's the starting point of your music. Then make sure snapping is on by hitting the S key if it's not on already, and then line it up directly with the cut that you want it to land on. Now you can drag the cut point here backwards as far as you like. Then you can add in simple keyframes for the audio to start soft and then ramp up to normal value so that it feels like you're building up to that big hit. But you might be wondering, hey, that's cool, but I'm not worried about this part here. I'm worried about this section all the way over here. What if I can't just fade in the audio and make it sound good? How do I naturally start up this piece of music? That's a really good question. And that's also the reason why I did this. Cut the audio, make a joke, break up the pacing. And then when you start back up again, just do it by dragging the audio all the way over here to where you wanna start again. And the reason this works is because nobody cares if the audio starts back up again exactly where you cut it. You cut off the music really abruptly so you can start it back up really abruptly. And it also kind of works like a magic trick too. The thing that everybody focuses on is over here, but what I did to make sure the timing worked was set up all the way back here. And it doesn't even really matter what kind of videos you're making or what style you're going for, cutting the music draws attention to whatever it is that you're saying. So for comedy, this helps you to land a joke better. And this isn't just for YouTube videos, this is a staple in every comedic movie trailer ever made. There's lots of famous men and women friends. Laura Dern and Sam Neill in Jurassic Park but this same technique can also be used to highlight a really emotional moment as well. Whatever kind of video you're editing, this technique will help you to make it feel like your music was handcrafted for your particular video. But if you really wanna make it sound like your music was designed specifically for your video, you're gonna want this next tip because you can actually manually just change what portions of your song play when. Most songs will have a really distinctive beat that gives it a particular pacing or rhythm. You should be able to easily distinguish the beat of your song, especially by looking for the peaks on your audio waveform, and we can try it out by listening to this song together. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
repeated over and over again. And now that you know how to count the pacing of a song, all that you have to do is take a beat with that same number, cut there, and then splice it with a downbeat on that same number. And without any fancy transitions or anything, it already sounds flawless. And if it does sound off by just a hair, then you can press Y to bring up the slip tool. And without moving any positioning, you can change the timing of one of your clips by just one frame in either direction to see if it sounds any better. But if you're cutting sections with distinct instruments or more noticeable change, you can also add a quick crossfade here to hide the cut a lot better. Just highlight the cut while holding Ctrl or Command to make sure you're highlighting the cutting point and hit Ctrl or Command D to add a default crossfade and then just shorten it up a bit so that it's not as long. This is also a really great method for ending your song early if the natural ending to your song sounds the way you want. Just cut on a one downbeat and then splice it in and... But if all that work is too much for you, then you can just use the remix tool. Drop a clean music track onto your timeline and then drop down here to the remix tool. Now, if you wanna end your music here, just click and drag your music to there. And that was in real time how fast it remixes your song. But what if you find the perfect song, but it doesn't have the perfect ending? So you can't just place down the section that you want at the end. You want it to end abruptly, but you don't want it to sound like it's just being cut off. So is all hope lost? No, you can actually just create your own ending using any distinct downbeat, and here's how you do it. Find the place where you wanna make your music stop and cut right after the downbeat, right after your waveform spikes. Now leave a little bit of excess. The key is that you don't want too much of other instruments sounding like they're continuing the song, so your section here might be really short and that's okay. Make a cut again to isolate this section and then get rid of all the extra stuff afterwards. Now we're gonna right click this smaller audio section here and nest it. So we should be left with this, our song, and then the nested audio clip afterwards that we can't extend any further than this. Next up, double click on your nested section to dive into it and let's do the following. Hold Alter Option and click and drag your music clip underneath itself to duplicate it. Right click and select Enable to disable it and then stretch it out as long as you want. That might seem weird. Why did we just do that? Well, if we go back to our main sequence, we can see that now we can increase the length of this section. And this will allow us to really ring out this last note. So now let's quickly go back into our nested sequence and we're gonna add a couple of keyframes to fade out this audio track. You can also just add a small crossfade if you want to. Now we can go back to our main sequence and we're gonna grab the studio reverb effect from our effects panel. Slap it down on this smaller section and I like to set mine to the Great Hall preset. This will give it a nice reverberating echo and help it to ring out instead of just abruptly ending. Now all that's left to do is highlight the cut between these two clips and add a default audio crossfade and shorten it up just a bit. And now we're left with this. A perfect ending to our song, but even that's not my favorite trick. Because if you've ever been editing with cuts to the beat of your song, and you felt like that you know it's on the downbeat of the song, it looks like it's lined up perfectly, but you play it back and it just feels off. It feels like it's not lined up even though it actually is. Well, if that's you, then you can just place your cuts one frame before the downbeat. And to do that in one fell swoop, highlight all of the clips in question, then hold Control or Command and click the left arrow key. And you've moved them all over by one frame. And if you guys liked any of the songs or any of the visual assets that I used in this video, I've left a link to all of them in the description down below. And you can also check out this tutorial right here. I'll see you over there.